Hey guys, so today I wanted to give a, a brief overview, an introduction to, about how the eyes work. So our eyes are really important and really special organs because they allow the brain to detect the presence of light around us, right? And what we see, I mean it's worth mentioning that what we see are the light rays that reflect off of the objects um, in our environment. So here's a quick introduction to kind of how the eyes work and the parts that the eyes contain. All right, so over here on the, the left, what we've got here is we've got a picture of the eye from the lateral view. This is um, some pictures that we drew in class the other day. And um, this is nice because this is going to show us the muscles that are connected to the outside of the eye. These external eye muscles allow us to focus or move the eye and um, look at different things around us, right, obviously. So um, these external eye muscles, there's six of them. This one right here on the left, that's called the lateral rectus, and that allows us to look laterally. Um, this muscle right here that kind of stretches on top that's called the superior rectus when that muscle contracts it causes the eyes to look up and in so like up and in this muscle down here that's called the inferior rectus when that contracts it causes the, the eye to look down and in we also have a medial rectus on the, on the medial side of the eye you can't really see that here when that contracts it causes the eye to look medially this muscle down here that starts on the medial side of the orbit and wraps the lateral side of the eye, that's called the inferior oblique. And when that contracts, it causes the eye to look upwards and out, so up and lateral. And then here, this is called the superior rectus. This is a muscle that loops through this little pulley of connective tissue called the trochlea. And when it contracts, it pulls on the back of the eye to cause it to look down and out. So down and laterally. Um, all right, good, let's see here. So you can see this blue iris, that is the part of the eye that controls how much light comes into the eye. Um, light passes through this dark area, which is called the cornea. Um, it's dark in color because, well, like the inside of the eye is darker than the outside environment. Kind of similar to if you look at an office building and during the daytime, those windows are gonna look um, dark right because it's darker than the outside environment um okay see this uh, little green line um, that spans from the um, basically the cornea and then it loops around here and it connects to the underside of the eyelid like this is the eyelid here upper eyelid bottom eyelid that's called the conjunctiva and this is a slimy membrane that allows the eye to kind of move smoothly in the orbit and it also prevents things from um, getting into the eye and passing to the back of the orbit which wouldn't be a good thing when this gets infected with a bacterial infection that creates conjunctivitis which is just inflammation of the conjunctiva um, contact lenses really sit in this tiny little space um, between the two layers of the conjunctiva that's called the conjunctival sac great all right, so that's kind of an overview of what this eye looks like and how it sits in the orbit. Oh, this is important. So we go up here. Um, this is the kind of the front view of an eye little illustration. This green, um, I guess, blob represents the lacrimal gland, which is obviously beneath the skin. But this lacrimal gland produces tears. Those uh, tears are going to be secreted into the eye and. Um, it helps to lubricate the eye so we, the eye can kind of look around without experiencing friction or abrasion. Um, those tears will then drain through a series of drainage tubes, which are collectively called the nasolacrimal duct. This nasolacrimal duct will transport the drained tears to the nasal cavity. Okay. Another thing that I wanted to kind of draw here is that if you look at the iris, the iris is going to consist of two different types of muscles from this view. We're going to have these circular muscles that wrap around the cornea. When those contract, they're going to make the uh, cornea smaller. Okay, those are going to be under parasympathetic control. And then these fibers that radiate um, outwards, those are called the radial fibers of the iris. And when they contract, they cause the cornea to get larger. Those are going to be under sympathetic control or under control of the sympathetic nervous system.
Okay, let's kind of switch gears and now look at a picture of the eye, again from this lateral view, but this time we've cut it in half with a sagittal section so we can see the different parts and layers. The outer layer of the eye is called the sclera, and it is white in color because it contains a lot of collagen, and collagen is white in color. Um, it's really tough in its consistency. It contains dense, irregular connective tissue, and um, yeah, this is kind of that protective outer covering of the eye. It needs to be pretty tough because that is what those um, external eye muscles connect to. Okay, and also this just gives the, the eye some strength so that it is it's not super fragile. Okay, um, the cornea is located uh, right here. And again, this is where light passes into the eye. It's completely transparent, which means it cannot have a blood supply. Blood is not transparent, blood's opaque, so um, blood would not be good here, right? So the cornea is completely transparent. However, it is alive. It consists of living cells. These cells are gonna get their nutrition from the fluid located in this tiny space behind the cornea. The fluid in this space is called the aqueous humor. And this aqueous humor um, contains the nutrients, the oxygen and the, the, um, the, the nutrients that the cells of the cornea will need to survive. All right, it's actually, this fluid is actually produced by this uh, structure here called the ciliary body. We'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, good. Now the second layer of the eye is called the choroid. That's this layer that's shaded in in brown. It is very rich in blood vessels. In fact, it contains the richest density of capillaries of anywhere in the body. And it is rich in um, a pigment of called um, melanin, right? Rich in melanin. And the purpose of this melanin is to absorb light that's kind of reflecting and bouncing around the inside of the eye. Without this pigment, this reflected light would interfere with our eye's ability to collect focused images, and our images would be kind of washed out and blurry. In fact, this is a big problem for folks and animals that suffer from albinism. That's the condition in which the body cannot produce any pigment. Um, because of that, they don't produce uh, melanin inside the choroid, which allows the light to reflect around and really makes vision a problem and a challenge for, um, for those individuals. That's why also if you see an albino animal, like an albino rat in a, in a pet shop, their eyes appear red because all of that light is reflecting off of the blood vessels in the choroid. The anterior part of the choroid um, here consists of this enlargement called the ciliary body. Okay, one function of the ciliary body is to produce that aqueous humor which nourishes the, um, the cornea. Um, these little drainage tubes, uh, their function is to drain the aqueous humor after it has been produced. If those don't drain that fluid well enough, that leads to glaucoma, which is a condition in which the pressure inside the eye increases to a level that's above what it should be. That's a problem because it'll start to put pressure on these neurons that will deliver information from the photoreceptors to the brain. If the pressure gets too high, then it'll kill some of these neurons, which can lead to blindness. So glaucoma is a major issue. All right, um, this projection of the choroid here and here, that is the lateral view of the iris. We've already kind of talked about that. That controls how much light gets into the, the eye. This structure right there, this is an oval um, or an egg-shaped structure called the lens. It's also transparent. The job of the lens is to focus incoming light on the back of the retina. The retina is drawn here in purple, and this is a collection of photoreceptors, which have the job of converting um, rays of light or photons of light into an action potential that the brain can understand. The very back of the retina directly behind the lens is called the fovea centralis. That's the um, middle part of a larger structure here and here, which is called the macula densa. In order for images to be in focus, the lens must focus the incoming light rays at ex the exact moment when those light rays interact or encounter the fovea centralis. Here's kind of how it works. And the lens needs to be different shapes in order to accomplish this based on how far away the object is that you're looking at. So here, let's imagine one situation that we're looking at something really close up. This would be like looking at an Expo marker. That's what I drew here. That's like really close to your face. 
the light rays bouncing off of this expo marker are going to be entering into the eye at a pretty steep angle. In order for the lens to have these light rays converge at the exact um, location at the back of the retina, this lens needs to be pretty thick in its shape. A thicker lens is going to change the direction of light rays um, to, a great, to, to a large extent. It's really going to change that direction versus a flatter lens like a window that doesn't really change the direction that light rays are traveling. Okay, but that's going to be different from when we look at something pretty far away. So here's an example where we're looking at like a person across a parking lot. That person's much smaller, so the light rays that reflect off of this person are going to be entering into the eye at a less steep of an angle. Those light rays are more parallel. To ensure that those light rays converge at the back of the retina, the lens needs to be a flatter shape, almost like a window. So. When you're looking at something close up, the lens needs to be flat. When you're looking at something far away, the lens needs to be, uh, no, excuse me. When you're looking at something far close up, the need, lens needs to be fat. When you're looking at something far away, the lens needs to be flat or um, not as thick. And here's how this is accomplished. So the lens is attached to the ciliary body and the ciliary body is gonna control the thickness of the lens. This is how it works. When the ciliary body, the muscles in this structure, when they contract, that's going to cause this enlargement to get bigger. As it gets bigger, it's going to put less tension on these tendon-like strings that attach it to the lens. That's going to cause the lens to get shorter and thicker in shape. Then when you're looking at something far away, the ciliary body is going to relax. That causes that ciliary body to get like flatter, right, flatter. and. Um, as it gets flatter, it puts more tension on those tendon-like strings and the lens gets flat. Now, if your eye is not able to allow the, or the lens is not able to um, converge these light rays at the very back of the retina, that's what causes blurry vision. Eyeglasses simply are an additional lens that helps to bend the light rays so they do converge the back. All right. Um, a little bit more about the, the retina. The retina does consist of two different types of photoreceptors. We have rods and cones. Rods are um, much more numerous. There's 20 times more of those. And these rods, um, they encode light and grayscale, so they're not able to see colors. They also work really well in dim light. Cones are different because there's fewer of them, but one thing about cones is that they allow you to see in color and they require bright light to be activated. There's actually three different types of cones. You have cones that respond to red light, green light, and um, blue light. And uh, colors that stimulate both of those colors at the same time allow you to see things like purple. Like purple is a combination of red and blue. So if you see something in purple, it'll stimulate both the red and the blue lights. That tells your brain that you're um, looking at something in purple. Every color in the rainbow can be encoded by some combination of red, blue, and green, just like RGB color on the computer. So that's kind of how this works. All right, perfect. So this is a brief overview of kind of how all this works. Um, these little green lines, those represent um, afferent neurons, which are going to deliver those action potentials or action potentials to the brain when the connected photoreceptors are stimulated. The brain is going to put all this information together and by kind of um, integrating the information from all these hundreds of thousands of photoreceptors at the same time, we can see a nice image of what's going on around us. All right, so hopefully this was a nice little overview check out the other lectures where we go into a little bit more detail about how some of these processes are accomplished all right thank you